Hi, my name is Sean Thorson. I make props and costumes for all sorts of different applications. And this year, to get ready for the Maker Faire, I'm building a giant bad guy robot from the original Robocop movies called Ed 209. It's going to be everything I can do to get it done just in time for the event, and here we go. Welcome back. We're coming up on, I suppose this is a couple of weeks into the uh, giant ED-209 project. Last time you were here, we kind of went over some of the basic construction and how the scale process is coming together for this thing, actually deciding on a scale factor and then uh, beginning to make prototypes. The first prototype that I put together so far is the lower portion of the leg. This is the section that goes sort of from the heel to the toe, and it's a fairly large piece. Um, right now, it's just a bunch of MDF and Bondo and random scraps of whatever was sitting around. Attached to this is gonna be some smaller detail parts. So you can see here is the prototype coming together for one of the little display panels that'll fit in the side. In order to make it easier on the fiberglass mold, this piece will be cast separately. It means that the fiberglass mold's gonna have an easier time coming off of the prototype. There's a rail that fits into the back of the leg. I'm gonna end up making four copies of this for the robot and it'll stick out the top of the lower leg and sliding up and down on the rail. This is the heel block, which in the film, if you remember when the robot was walking, this is the portion that would slide up and down as the leg extended, make it possible for the thing to walk around. Got the first toe slowly coming together here. Still needs quite a bit more in the way of uh, smoothing and shaping and straightening out some of the edges that I'm not really happy with just yet. And then one of the more dramatic pieces, this is the gun pod. Very rough shape coming together. There's gonna to be a lot of details added to this. A little bit more length to either end where it tapers. And by the time it's done, it's gonna look much larger and much more imposing, even though it's already a little on the big side. You start with whatever piece you're gonna have, your prototype, also called a plug. Everything gets a coat of primer, which fills up all the wood grain and makes it a little bit uh, smoother. And then once the primer dries, you wanna make it as glossy as possible. So I just spray on a coat of uh, this gloss pink color that I keep on hand. It's become sort of my standard prototype color in the past few years, um, mostly because it seems to bother people. The next thing is basically continuing to make it shiny by applying a few coats of wax, which is what I'm going through right now. In order to decide where the mold is gonna part, basically I'm gonna find a center line. So I'll just mark it in a few places. The actual parting line is gonna be built out of clay, but in order to make it easier to get the clay off when it comes to that stage, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up a little bit of masking tape. Once you've decided how you're gonna split it in half, you go ahead and build your parting wall. It's basically just oil-based clay, like modeling clay that you had as a little kid. And we wanna have one side of it, the side that's actually gonna have the gel coat and the fiberglass laid up on it today, um, so that it's as smooth and flat as possible. And basically what you're trying to do is eliminate any potential snags where the fiberglass and gel coat are gonna to try to lock into each other. So we'll put a release agent on there so that they won't bond chemically, but you also wanna make sure that you're actually building the pieces so they won't end up binding up mechanically. When the two pieces are done getting laid up, the parting line here is also gonna become sort of a flange where the two halves of the mold will get bolted together. So you wanna give yourself enough space off of the part itself to be able to get a little bit of a curve in the corner and still be able to actually have room to drill holes and put bolts to hold the two halves together. Then once your parting wall is built, you're gonna lay it over on one side and you're gonna coat the first half of the prototype with a mold release. You're looking for something that's gonna prevent a bond between the prototype itself and your fiberglass mold as you build it up. The first thing you do once the mold release has dried is you put a layer of gel coat down and that's gonna get all of your details against the surface. It's gonna give you something that's gonna be easier to sand when you pull the mold apart. Once the gel coat starts to gel and get a little bit more solid, you start laying up your fiberglass. In this case, I've been using uh, fiberglass matting. I'm using a three quarter ounce mat. It's very thin, very lightweight. It's easy to use. It's easy to saturate and wet out the cloth with or the, the mat with the polyester resin that I'm using. A couple of layers of the mat gets built up. It gets saturated with the resin. And when you've got enough thickness built up, the strength that you're looking for, you let it cure flip the whole assembly over, remove the clay that you used to build your parting wall, 
and then you go through the exact same process. Once the fiberglass is nice and solid, you can go ahead and separate the two halves of the mold. So you'll drill a series of holes along the edge where the two are gonna meet up so that you can bolt it back together, pull the prototype out of your two mold halves. Once you've got those two mold halves, you lay them open, clean them up, do the exact same layup as you did with the actual mold. So you'll start with your release agent, then the gel coat. When the gel coat firms up, you do the fiberglass over that. Once you've got a couple of layers built up for strength, you're gonna bolt the two halves of the mold back together. And then when the two halves are bolted back together, you've got a seam where the two parts are gonna be separate. You're basically gonna lay fiberglass over that seam to bond the two halves of your part together. Once that's nice and cured, everything gets solid, then you can go ahead and separate the two halves of the mold and pull the part out of the mold. All right, mixing the resin. Uh, you can actually control to some extent what the cure time is going to be. It's affected by temperature, it's affected by the size of the batch that you mix. So a larger batch is going to cure faster. In hotter temperatures, it's going to cure faster. If you want to slow it down, you can get away with putting in a little bit less catalyst. If you're in a hurry, you can speed it up by putting in a little bit more catalyst. Um, the stuff that I'm using in this case, it says on the manufacturer's directions to mix it with 8 to 12 drops of catalyst per fluid ounce of resin. So again, if you're in a hurry, you lean more towards 12. If you want more time to work with it, you slack off a little bit and lean more towards eight drops per ounce. Um, when you're mixing batches one on top of another, each one of the ones that you're laying up, you'll actually feel it getting warmer as it cures. And again, that'll also help kind of accelerate the cure of successive layers that get laid on top of it. So that's a quick and dirty version of how to make molds and pull parts in fiberglass. When you tune in next time, we're going to be making some more detailed molds using silicone rubber and smaller parts for a lot higher detail when it's all said and done. So make sure to check it out. I've got 72 days left to get this whole thing packed up in the truck with the paint dry, so time's wasting.